Hey friends, what's going on? So in this video, I'm gonna answer a listener question about strumming without a pick. And I'm gonna show you about three or four techniques you can do when you're strumming, if you don't have a pick or you don't wanna use a pick, to sort of get a few different sounds. So let's look at the question. So Tim wrote in saying he's six months into playing guitar and he's just using his thumb, he much prefers that. And is there anything he's missing out on by not using a pick? So. Uh, Tim, to get right to it, I think go with it, man. If, if you're happy with just your thumb, there's no reason to force yourself into getting into using a pick. Now, eventually, like, it is good to try new things eventually if you're looking for ways to expand. But for now, in these first few months, the first year, go with what's working for you. And if you're having a good time and having fun with it, that's totally fine, right? So let me show you a few different ways that I like to strum without a pick, right? The simplest one, and I think for beginners, this is a great way just to get started, is just using your thumb and you can just do sort of gentle, sort of brushed down strums, right? So I'm only going down, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm doing uh, one strum every two beats here, right? You could even do less, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this technique is good if you're not in a hurry, right? And you just sort of wanna flush things out. And even if you wanted to pick up the tempo, you could do this, right? Down, 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 down. I'm sort of strumming all the strings that would be used in each chord. Now, this technique, I would consider this as like using a, a big pencil that's not sharp and it has really soft lead and you're kind of just doing broad, big strokes and you're not getting a lot of detail, but sometimes that's totally fine. You can sketch out the shape of something and get the contours and everything and get a feel for how things might be, right? right? And sometimes that's what you want when you're learning something is just getting over the hump, seeing if it'll work for you and you can decide to go with it or not. Now, here's one way to sort of amp this up a little bit. And this is basically to use your forefinger, your index finger, and the simplest way would just be sort of uh, almost like just extend the finger here, right? So you're starting off with the finger sort of like cocked like that and you just extend it, right? Right? And it's all down strums initially, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is a bit more uh, volume producing because your, your nail is a bit harsher of a, of a body part than the, your fleshy under part of your thumb, right? But even this is nice to just sort of you can do as slow, as fast as you want, right? Now, I want to talk about one way to sort of augment this a little bit, which is to use upstrums. And by upstrums, it's going to be the finger, but it's going to be basically the uh, this part of your index finger right here. So you could go... So my this is all my index finger, and it's sort of just brushing the strings. Right? I'm going between a C and a G and an A minor and an F. And one way to think of this is it's almost like your fingers are making a circle, right? If you look at this sort of um, close up here, it's, you know, I'm sort of doing a circular contour. And this is a way to get comfortable with upstrums, where when you do upstrums, you don't wanna, you don't wanna be too jerky like that and kinda, you know, be too loud on the strings. The upstrums in general are typically best when they're just a, a light brush anyway. So if you can, you know, just keep it low volume, Embrace that circular sort of motion if you need to get practice with that. It's a nice way to sort of get introduced to this sort of pattern. And again, this one's not going to be too specific. We're not calling out any individual bass notes, but it is a nice way to up the volume a little bit. Now, let's do another one. This one's going to be using a hybrid of the first two. So the first one was all thumb. The second one was all forefinger. What if we combine those? So this one's going to be basically um, thumb on the bass note, and then you can either do a strum like that with your index finger, or you could sort of grab and pluck the strings out, right? So say I was to do a C, a G over B, an A minor, and a, back to a G, right? I'm sort of doing the grab here, but you could do a... Right? So bass down, bass down, bass down, bass down, bass down, bass down, bass down. This is a really nice one. I've used this on a few of my recent lessons, right? I did Will You Love Me Tomorrow and Stand By Me, where you're just doing some general strumming. And those songs have lots of orchestration in the official version. So with a guitar, you're not trying to necessarily play these complex riffs or melodies or, or lead phrases. You just want to get the general chord progression, right? And you can kind of be nice and chill with your index finger. The tricky part about this one is there is some sort of accuracy with the thumb, right?
and that you have to get a clean bass note. But it is uh, very rewarding, and again, I just find all of everything I just showed you helpful little stand-ins to have fun with the guitar when you don't have a pick. I know the last, like, six months, I've probably been preferring no pick a lot of the time because for a lot of songs, it's just fun to sort of just sort of casually work things out, right? Now, there are times when you want to pick. Sometimes you want to sound exactly like the artist or you're doing, doing certain riffs and phrases that need the pick, and it's totally cool in those cases to use the pick, but if you can use what I showed you and find a way to play those same songs and feel good about it and enjoy yourself, Without a pick, that works too. So there's no wrong way to do it if it's uh, if it's working right for you. That's my sort of final advice there. So uh, Tim, hope this was helpful for you. Those are some techniques you might want to get started with. Let me know how this has worked out for you and uh, how you're doing with your strumming. So that's going to be it. If you have any questions, send me an email, uh, play.songnotes at gmail.com. That's the best way to do it. Comment on YouTube. I uh, don't check as often just because there's so many of them for so many videos, but emails I check all the time and I would be happy to consider answering a question you have on a future video. So this has been David Potts. Check out my website, playsongnotes.com if you want to check out my library of video lessons and PDF chord sheets. And until next time, my friends, I'll see you around. Bye-bye.